Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael from Arizona, and with me always are my good friends. Jay from the hills of Texas. And A.K. Mike in Texas. <laughs> and we would like to welcome Shannon Gallagher this week. Welcome Thanks, to the guys. Podcast. Thanks for hey. having me. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you were uh, with us last, uh, the last episode, we, um, we kind of finished up our uh, Arizona Electric Festival um, podcast, and uh, we're talking about some cool stuff. And uh, Shannon had mentioned that uh, he wanted to be a little more uh, involved, and so we, um, we'd like to have him on a guest. Uh, you know, we like to have him as a guest, and so we agreed, and, and uh, so we invited him to kind of participate with us. And, um, he brings a lot to uh, the podcast. I bring nothing. So we're excited I absolutely about nothing. Uh, you know how it is. Uh, but he's been a really good uh, supporter of us and uh, a really good friend and has uh, done a lot for the hobby. So we're we're glad to have him with us. Uh, safety tip. Uh, any, you guys do anything this week? Um, I've, I've been working on uh, my L39, basically trying to get it ready to maiden. Uh, do you guys fly at all? Any Anyone? No, I just, you know, just I just remember the one added safety third. <laughs> safety <laughs> third? It's, it's first. I'm sorry. I screwed that up. Okay, so I yeah today's safety tip, right? So we we've been kind of on this safety tip last time, and I don't know why it's me all the time, but uh, so I uh, was going over everything in my in my new turbine jet, and uh, this is you know I'm I'm going from tip to tail, making sure everything's there because it's a lot of you know it's a crier, a lot of money flying around up there, uh, and here we go. This is the uh, cable that goes from the uh, turbine all the way up to the receiver. And uh, it stretches, you know, kind of the length of the airplane. And so I was going through one of my lights uh, on the wing wasn't working. And so I was messing around with it and something shiny uh, poked me and, or at least caught my eye. I don't know if you can see right there. Mm, yeah. You see that? That is the cable that goes to the turbine that is cut not only once, but twice. Yikes. Oh, wow. Yep. So those, that shiny part there is actual wire. Exposed, exposed wire. That is so, correct. So you should touch those two together, right? Well, that's the point. If it's exposed wire and something else touches it, then, yes, it could it could short it out. Or out. It, it could have uh, basically these, these three wires connect uh, the power to the actual, you know, turbine. And then one of them is the signal. And uh, depending on which one this is, uh, whether the power or the signal, I could have lost both. So anyway, that just got yanked out. Uh, I have a new one, and uh, but that's what the green uh, green tips are to, to remind me that there's two cuts, and they're pretty pretty substantial. You can kind of see, it's not a small. If it was something small, I might be able to repair it. But that's actually missing the whole. It, it got cut somehow. I don't so know why what, or how. You just don't get cut uh, somehow. It, Something caused it. So what? What's your best guess as to what? It's well, I mean, I can imagine like if you're moving it around inside, it probably got caught on an edge somewhere and it just opened it up or whatever. Well, um, it could have, uh, or it could have uh, been, you know, in transport. It could have come like that. I mean, I don't know. Could uh, be the fancy I did scissors. That's what I was thinking. It like didn't get near scissors. my scissors, but it could be. <laughs> The problem is, is that this one here is on one end and this one here is on the other. If I opened it up and showed you one's close to this side and one's close to that side. But anybody who's watched you long enough, Mike, knows you're talented. Yeah. You could do well, that. You could do either could, end of that. I could cut could. both is ends. Is it sabotage? Yeah. Just fold it out? Yeah. It could be sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't Barry over So anyway, today? safety tip is to make sure you... Have you have a camera? Did, yeah, exactly. Maybe your wife kind of <laughs> stumbled into the workshop and... Yeah, you know, no, uh-uh. Yeah, okay. I doubt it. Reaches yeah, someone's scissors. Out snip. But, uh... <laughs> You'll stay yeah. home now. I know, right? No, scissors are for cutting myself, not other... Uh, she not accidentally other scraped it with her metal credit card. That she had. <laughs> yeah, she could have. I'm not really <laughs> sure what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, so safety tip of the week uh, for, for this podcast is to make sure that you double-check all your wiring uh, and, you know, make sure that everything is uh, is the way it should be because you never okay, know. Okay, so I have a question about that real quick. Sure. Uh, the power is for initial uh, spin-up, right, and maybe electronics, I guess? So it does have uh, a little bit of a, I call it a FADAC. It's a, you know, digital control for the fuel. And it does have, um, you know, a signal for the power. So you have a throttle that sends it. Then you do have a startup sequence. So you've got power for that startup sequence. I mean, because once, uh, it's, once it's going, it shouldn't need it's power going. anymore, right? That is correct. Yeah. So so the only one would be the signal Well, wire. you need power for the igniters. Oh, they still, still continue to run. I didn't realize yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, they and continue there's not like a magneto sort of a thing that goes no. on. Okay, got it. No, no, no. You still have to burn it, you know, so you still have spark. Even though it will continue to burn, you have to have that because as you go from full throttle to no throttle, you got less, you know, fuel air, and so the little spark continues to keep the, the flame going. Now, I think at some point when you start it, it uh, does two. It's got two rings that do double, and then one will fall off, and it'll just do the one. So I think it alternates between the two. That way you're constantly having, you know, something going. Now, like a, a real jet doesn't have that. You would turn those off once you started the motor because it's, you know, kind of doing its own thing. So, but anyway. Uh, and then uh, I guess, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our safety tip for, for this week. So, well, the only other safety tips that disasters. I have for the week, I, I've been dealing with the chainsaw, yeah. so that's not going to help much. That's all I've been doing is cutting cutting wood this week. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Since that is ice it a fly? Texas. I was going to say, do you have all your digits? How much? Most wood? of them. Do you have all your digits? Check, check if wood check, good check if wood. <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty go. much it. <laughs> that's pretty much that's it. That's yeah. funny. That's funny. All right. Wear gloves. Yeah. Wear gloves. Wear safety. Well, uh, Shannon, safety. you said you had. Uh, yeah, I say it's in gloves. That's about right. Uh, Shannon, you said you had a project yeah, you were working um, on real quick? I got a, uh, one of those Motion RC, the AL37. And it was a, it was a, you know, oh. a second hand. But uh, I'm repainting it as a P8, the Poseidon. And uh, oh, I nice. guess I have the world's worst um, uh, compressor because it would not hold, like, the pressure <laughs> long enough it? to paint. Oh, it's pretty bad. So, you know, no, no. safety tip. <laughs> Make sure your air your air supply is, is, is plentiful because otherwise you'll have lousy paint, you know, coming out. So but, there you um, go. Well, I mean, my compressor is. <laughs> That's better than what I got. <laughs> Come on over. You can be my compressor. There you go. Uh, well, if it's any consolation, the new shop is done and I do have like right at the end of this table is yeah. an air uh, hose. So, uh, you, you were, I got an 85 oh, uh, gallon wow. in the back back there that was yeah. just running actually. You probably heard it, but, uh, I've got more than enough air, 175 PSI, oh, wow. which you don't really yeah, you're closely like 40. need, but I will tell you that my, I, yeah, you need uh, at least yeah. 35 yeah. to 40 of your airbrushing. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, my system is set up where it is the driest air oh, wow. okay. that you will ever That's find. You live in the desert. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, no, 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 no. My, mine is not only filtered, but it's oh, cooled geez. as well. So, uh, yeah, just real quick. The, the, the way the compressor works is when it the, the engine's turning or the motor's turning, it's pumping hot air into the tank. And that hot air uh, is very super hot, like 300 and something degrees. As it expands, it cools and water vapor comes out, which is why if you go on YouTube, you'll find guys that have water in their tank after 10 years of using it. They never drain it. You're supposed to drain it all the time. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, so what I did is I had a custom, I know, I had a custom uh, uh, hose come out. So now it comes out at 342 degrees. It turns a corner and goes into a pre-cooler that does 16 turns around a um uh what is it a transmission cooler so the air comes in it does 16 turns to a transmission cooler that uses the fan of the compressor to blow air through so it's cooling as it's making these turns and it's also water separating then it comes out goes through a water separator then it goes into the tank and expands so that's already dry coming into the tank that fills up and comes out and goes in through a water separator again and then comes out the other side so my my auto body uh, jet guy that I fly with was like, "Holy smokes, you have really done over." He goes, "I, I paint cars for a living. I don't even have that good." No, of we're system. not worthy. You, you, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, well, I don't know. It was overkill. Uh, Jay and I. It's Jay's fault because he's the um, you know the enabler <laughs> and he kept throwing me stuff. Hey, look at this. You know, hey, you should do this. Hey, here's a YouTube video, and I just I just put them all together. He's like, no, I only meant for you to use one, <laughs> wow. but you used them all. So I was like, oh, well, I didn't know I was supposed to use just one. I thought they were all together. So, yeah, it is super dry air coming out of there. So my airbrush, I, it's the first time ever I've never had water come out of the, you know, the tip yeah. after using it for a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, you got to have, you got to have air. So, well, very cool. The Poseidon ought to look good. That's, uh, that, that's a neat, um, yeah, I'm, I'm neat project. Well, Shannon, what are you going to do to fix your problem though? Shannon's still got a problem. 
How are you going to fix well, that? Well, no, I mean, I'm not painting. Do? So he does. My, 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 my solution is going to be get a new compressor and obviously <laughs> go shopping <laughs> where Mike goes. <laughs> Watch all his. Right, there you go. <laughs> no, there, don't. So I, <laughs> just go over to Mike's house. Can't. Are you sure you really want me on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, just come like on over. Low you guys, at least in technology wise. No, 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 no. No. No, nah, you can just well, come over. Like I said, my compressor yeah. is, you know, <laughs> yeah, just to... keep blowing into a straw. <laughs> straw. So. Yeah, it's probably, I probably would have done better. So. <laughs> I think yeah, that's, that's 20 pounds. That. Yeah, yeah, that was Good close. Enough. He gets a big swig full of paint yeah. and just and, and right just make sure you lay plastic down. That was the other thing everywhere because I got paint everywhere. That's true. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's awful too. Yeah, oh, Jay. Crazy. Mike taught me about a paint booth, which I thought is a really cool idea. I have a yeah. a old wardrobe box that I have from when I moved, and uh, so you just hang your parts on mm-hmm. on that. And then spray inside. Yeah, this plane's a little too big for box. most. And then, like, I would need like an airplane paint booth. <laughs> no, no, I understand. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But I just. Well, did like you paint it while it was all together? Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. I was gonna say you can get like a little refrigerator type box and you know cut one yeah, side out of it. Yeah, I thought about that. If you just did that, the fuselage you know, and stuff. And I was gonna make one. I've got a bunch of extra yeah. PVC. I was gonna make like a then hang plastic behind it and clip it. Mm. Or go to your neighbor's house and. Well, do I did that. Your, they didn't like it last I mean, time. You, so, you know, I kind of outwore my welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Big facade and outline on their car. Yeah, no, there's a <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, guy pulls in his driveway. What is that? My neighbors, all my neighbors' driveway. So I'm kind of the pariah. It's like yeah, it's, it's on the grass. You know, you're gonna have the grass, grass next here, week. Like, what are you doing? Oh, mad about it? Doesn't yeah. you know cut that? That's right. Just shrink, yeah. shrink the uh, they have, uh, rake yeah, the gravel, rake the gravel rocks, they have rocks exactly. Just turn yeah. them over. It's fine. I've actually done that. Believe it or not, I went out the back and painted <laughs> something, and then I had this perfect outline. And my wife goes, "What the heck is in our?" You know, and I was like, "It's okay. I got the rake, and I raked them all out." So, a couple of the rocks, if you turn them over, they have some kind of a gray paint on the back sides, gray and blue and white. I think. I was painting my L39. It was a perfect outline. So, well, uh, this week we are uh, happy to have Shannon on because we have an event coming up, or it's not my event, but Shannon has an event coming up. It's a Gunsmoke 2003 Scale Masters qualifier. Pew, pew, and pew. I know, right? And I, I have talked to people that actually have been to Top Gun. They've been to you know all of the Scale Masters stuff, and they've won awards. Uh, I'd love to build, you know, I, I've been weathering this airplane and, uh, and Jay and I were talking, uh, not too long ago and, you know, about this that came up and I was just like, huh, I, I don't really know what's entailed in this whole process and what it takes to go to top, you know, to top gun or gun smoke or whatever. I don't know if they're, no, are they're they together? They're anyway, that's kind of why, uh, okay. They are separate. Okay. So I, I want you to kind of walk us through what this is, how it comes to be because, you know, at the electric festival, a couple of guys were up talking to us and they were like, Oh, are you coming? You know, or what are you doing? And I was showing pictures of my L39. They're like, Oh my gosh, look at all the scale that you've done to it. I'm like, yeah, you should come and qualify and do this and do that. And okay, I got to talk shit. Well, so welcome on. All and, right. uh, kind so, of walk uh, us through. Am I the foremost expert on this? No, but I know enough to be dangerous. So <laughs> let's put it, that. let's put it. <laughs> That's all we the three want. of us. Uh, <laughs> you're you're right. Yeah. You've got good company. Uh, so Scale Master has been around since the '70s, and it's uh, it's run currently by um, uh, uh, Curtis Kiering, uh, Kiering him if I said his name right, and then Tim Dickey does a lot of help, and Brian O'Meara, they're kind of the big guys that kind of run it and uh, keep it going. And uh, Tim Dickey is a member of our our, our club, and uh, he's the the contest director for this year's event and Gunsmoke. Is is typically the first of the qualifying events. So how Skill Masters works is um, they have several qualifying events all over the country, and then they pick one location for the the championship. Uh, we had it last last year here in here in, in Arizona, and uh, it was really cool to have that here. Uh, we hadn't had it in twenty years, so it was really cool to have that and bring it back. Uh, oh, this wow. year, I think it's it's somewhere in the Midwest. They haven't said the exact place. It's either Texas or. Uh, Nebraska. I'm, I'm not sure which place mm. it's going to be. So they, they move it around, which is a good thing. I think you know, don't, don't want to just kind of, it used to be in California sure. all the time for, for decades, but it's kind of, kind of, oh, right, right. um, there's several classes and, and the classes, that's really what sets the men from the boys apart. Um, there's, uh, there's team where typically one person builds the airplane, one person flies the airplane. Uh, a lot of our 
local club members do that. Um, Matt Ventura, who does my registration, Gary Bailey, mm-hmm. who does my mm-hmm. technical stuff. Uh, they do team. So Matt built uh, Beechcraft Bonanza and uh, did all the detail work to it. And then Gary Bailey does the flying for it. So that's how that works. Um, yeah. Oh, so then there's nice. other events. There's, there's um, expert, uh, advanced, and pro-am, pro and pro-am sport. Uh, I don't know all of those particulars, but it gets more um, – it's more detailed uh, as to how much you need to provide as far as um, documentation about the aircraft, about your your building of the aircraft, all of the things that that you did. Um, you have to build the plane pretty much from scratch uh, is 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 one of the rules. Um, uh. If you bought like an ARF and you showed that you did most of the work to it, you know, basic airframe, um, that will work for some of the classes. But when you get into the uh, the pro, basically, you, you, you need to start from scratch. Um, again, you, you can have a fiberglass airplane. Like, I think you've got your L-39. It's probably fiberglass, right? But if you yeah, you yeah. permission to show that it was bare bones and you put the thing together and you did all the work to it. Mm-hmm. That's how it usually works. Um, right. But there are, like, advanced. Gotcha. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Spencer Kleinhaus has an F-16 that he bought that had mm-hmm. been wrecked. And he redid everything. And we've all seen Spencer right. F-16 fly. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And he's done so much work to it. You know, he makes all kinds of custom things for it. And uh, there was some con- there was some right. fighting over during during the course of Scale Masters as to you know which class does he fit in because um, he you know basically resurrected this from the dead. <laughs> if you're, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I was there exactly. when we got it, or so when he got it. it. So yeah, it's a yeah. zombie yeah, class. Zombie class. Yeah, we got. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it was the zombie that's, class that's, that's for the guys that have been around yeah. for a long time. So. <laughs> But uh, so, yeah, so the, uh, so the rules for what you're supposed to do. And then um, once you've built the aircraft, you know, you provide all the documentation as to, you know, which aircraft you, you've chosen to, to make it to model after pictures. Um, the judges who are who actually go through some training from from experienced judges who have been doing this for, for many, many years. They're looking for all the minute little details, making sure that, you know, the space from the, the wing root to the this is the same and that the moment from the tail to the wing, you know, to the, mm. the wing to the tail is the same. Mm. And, you know, is the windshield the right shape? Is the cowl, you know, does the, are the cowl lines in the right spot? You know, are the wheels, in, you know, aligned right? I mean, it's just, it's crazy all the detail they go into. But, but at the same time is it's really fun if you think about it because – you're challenged, you know, maybe the first time you do it, you don't quite get it, you know, you know all you need to do is, I mean, they're nice about it. They're not like, you know, you know, making fun of right. you. Some people take right. it that way, but they're not, um, <laughs> you know, they're looking at, you know, right. they're trying to say, you know, <laughs> you, you know, this is the best looking plane of, of, you know, to scale of this one. And then they also then judge on the actual flying of it. So you, you, you come up with a routine, uh, the types of, you know, you know, aerobatics that the aircraft would do. Uh, you know, how well you take off, how mm-hmm. well you land, you know, how precise are your, are your turns? You know, if you do a roll, you know, is it straight? Is it, you know, is it, you do a loop, you know, all those things they look at, uh, and they judge them on it. So, uh, it's really cool. I mean, it's, it's, is it the most exciting thing to watch? No, but if you're competing, um, you know, you're, you're really focused, and you're really into it. And I, I really mm-hmm. admire the guys that, that spend all the time, you know, doing this. Uh, I'd love to spend more time to be able to do it. Uh, you know, I'm just happy to get a plane like, you know, my P8 painted and some stickers on it and go fly it. Right. It looks cool right. in the air, but these guys right. really, really, <laughs> really do it. Um, uh, perfect example, uh, Tim Dickey is building a Waco, um, the, the one with the cabin. Like the, like, I forget which one, you know, but it actually has a cabin, not just the open mm-hmm. air. Yeah. He built the thing, right. he built it from scratch. Right. He got the plans, like from the Smithsonian, the original plans of the original Waco. He got a copy of the plans and then, and then he's building the plane off of those plans. So when he, when he Full got scale, the plans, yes. that's for so the he scaled scale it down. you're talking about. So right. then he had to yeah. scale them down. Yeah. And if, Holy if, if you go look at his Facebook page, wow. I mean, the detail he's putting he, he's got a you know he's got a one of the the robart seven cylinder radial engines he's making that engine even look like the engine should look you know and that's because it mm-hmm. sticks outside of the airplane and so it, even even like the metal work right you know, he's doing right. he learned how to weld aluminum and you know he's using carbon fiber yes, and, and composites in certain areas but it's it's building it mm-hmm. like a real airplane 
to where you, you're going to be hard pressed to realize that it's a radio controlled airplane compared to the real one. And a lot of guys, you know, not all the guys do wow. that to that degree, but just watching him do this, it's amazing. Right. So, right. Huh. So, so like, do they have a class where, you know, you get a really cool builder like Mike building this awesome plane and they get a numb school, that, like, that would be team. fly it. It's like, if I can leave it in, if I, if I can fly, yeah, but I mean, like I get, we get extra points because I'm such a numb school flyer. Like if I can keep it in the air for two minutes, <laughs> um, then, you know, that's. They're wanting you to have a pretty high level of. Uh... Oh, okay. All right. So they're they're a little bit, more yeah, yeah. Snooty, I mean, this is, is what you're saying. They don't, this, they're, yeah, they're, okay, yeah, and they actually even make you have a turbine yeah. waiver. So imagine but, but that. But one of the Mike. things we're doing this year, okay. at least for Gunsmoke, um, Gunsmoke is is a local club event. It used to be a you know the 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 scale masters would actually rent the field from us uh, and pay us you know and pay oh, us right. a fee for that. But what we did is we we kind of took it back as an event. So we don't we're not charging rent. Tim Dickey, you know, he's a member of our club. He's running as a, as a CD. So it's right. actually saving, you know, the skill masters some money. Uh, it helps us actually generate more money for, you know, parking things like that. We don't get a lot of uh, – it's not as big as AEF. It's not yeah, quite it's as not big, big as we, it used to be. Right. Um, we used to have – when we, it was really cool right. back in the day was we would have judging uh, at the Champlain Fighter Museum. We would actually go in, in, in one of the hangars and they'd sell the airplanes up. So basically you got to go to the museum oh. for free if you were part of Scale Master. It was really cool. Those were, this was back in the day. Oh, um, that's cool. And, but yeah. uh, and we tried to do more with the Confederate Air Force to kind of be part of it. And yes and no, they do some things with us, some things we, you know, we, we can't get them to let us have the hangar <laughs> to do it. But right. still, we're, we're, we're trying. Right, we sure. Uh, but just the fact that you know, this year we're, it's a club event, and we're having um, a, a, a class that is um, just for Arizona. So if you're if you're an Arizona native and you're, you're participating, you can participate in all of the classes you want. You just got to pay for it. But there's one that's kind of like okay, as long as you show up, you have a scale somewhat scale airplane, and you fly it. You know, there's a prize for 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 being in the club, you know, or, or local member and, and just coming out and trying it out to get people more interested in it. So that's really one of the cool things that we're doing this year is, you know, we want to get more people and we've been having seminars where people come out to the field and we show them, here's what we're doing for the flight judging. Here's what we're doing for the static judging. Uh, so we're getting a lot more interest uh, by just saying, Hey guys, huh. we want you to come out and do this. Cause for a long time, this was kind of a, you know, members only. You know, you, you know, kind of like the Friars Club of RC. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. about it. You know, you got to have a jacket and everything. But uh, right. just, the jackets are really expensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, no doubt. Uh, go ahead. Now, I, I that that's uh, that's kind of part of what your thing. I, I know it says entry fee mm -hmm. waived for first time competitors, yeah. so that's what you're talking about. You get yeah. that extra. Okay. So that if they just if you just had something to come out and get it. Yeah, and I you know I. I was really kind of getting into it. I got so busy with AEF and finishing up, you know, with you know, mm -hmm. the club stuff I was working on. I really didn't get the chance to sit down and do what I was wanting to do with this. So maybe next year I'll do it. But, uh, but just the interest to see um, guys coming out and saying, Hey, yeah, you know, I want to do this. And there's a few people that have done it before. And again, they got away from it because of, you know, just time and whatever uh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're seeing this. I can get back in and 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 you know have some fun with it, and then maybe take it up to the next level and then the next level as it goes on. So, so just the uh, the clear just clarification. It looks like all of those things, the five classes you talked about. There, there's a fee for each class. Or yeah, it's, it's just a fee a, for each class. Because you would yeah, have so one airplane in each in, class, right? It's okay, like yeah, it's a, it's okay. not as much for each one. So it's like you pay so much for the first one, and then it's it's right, discounted. Right. Uh, most right. guys do like two or three classes, at least of the higher level ones. Um, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. So they have two, two or three, three airplanes, airplanes, or it's yeah. the same airplane in each class? Yes. Yeah. Oh no, kidding! So there's a couple oh, guys that do wow. that. Wow, that's some serious work if you're putting three, yeah, two or three or really four is. airplanes. And, all you know, some guys are you know they're better at you know a plane that just fits. You know, okay, it looks like the airplane. I got a picture of it. It works, and and then they fly it a little better than the other guy. That or vice versa. So 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 another question I have is because uh, I you know I mean I know some of the guys you're talking about and. I've seen their airplanes and their airplanes are phenomenal. And, but do they resubmit it again next year or do they, is this a 
process where every no, year they have, uh, to have a new lots airplane. of the guys will keep using the same aircraft over and over and based on whatever they were scored on uh in their static scores they'll improve they'll they'll, they'll try to make an improvement over improve. the like okay um I remember Matt Ventura got dinged for his paint wasn't quite right. So he went and he repainted it and okay. they still didn't approve his paint not being right. <laughs> but but it was but he made the attempt to 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 make it better. So yeah. To fix it, right. Right. So now kind of walk me through a little bit of the judging because, you know, I mean I've burned up a couple of mechanical pencils, you know, right. putting all my rivets in place and doing kind of some of that kind of stuff. But are they looking for things that like it it's brand new out of the showroom or are they looking for things that it's been sitting, sitting there? Cause you know, in my thought process with this L 39, it's a Russian airplane. It sits out, you know, side, the paint's chipping off of it. You know, I mean, there's little things that I'm doing to make it look greasy and, you know, muddy and, you know, used and that kind of thing. And I know when I was helping Spencer that the guy that was competing in something similar was putting like boot marks, you know, like somebody yeah, was walking the, around on the, the, mo- on the, the more realistic little... as, as it's, as if it's flying today, that's kind of what you're looking like. Not, not showroom, okay. you know, just, you know, just picked up the keys from Cessna. Um, but if it's been, if it's, if it's a plane mm-hmm. that's flying yeah. or, or, the, or, or to the point where it flew, what, what kind of, you know, is there oil, you know, dripping off of it is there mm-hmm. uh is there a is there a dent right. that was left you know for whatever reason in the, in the fuselage those kind of things mm-hmm. that they see those kind of details they're like oh wow i i get that you know uh even the cockpit combing okay. you know, how close does that look to the real stuff <laughs> things like that so yeah the gotcha. more realistic gotcha. uh the better as far as but but ha- but having said that, you know, obviously, if you're building a Waco from 1940, it's not going to look like a 1940 airplane. It's going to look like it's unless you new. but you want to weather it to that, to what you know, to what what one would one what what the pictures you've you've submitted, it should look just like the pictures you've submitted. Basically. Uh, oh, so so if you have yeah. a picture of it one, it's already be based on an that, like the real, real thing, airplane. and you're going to that's the other thing. So I apologize if that wasn't gotcha. clear, but it okay. has yeah, to be I based on that. based on an existing yeah, yeah. real aircraft. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. probably made that clear. I just didn't make the connection until you said that. So, well, that that makes yeah. a lot more sense now. So, especially if I had a you know picture of a brand yeah. new walk out of the and factory, and they're judged from a distance, so it's not like they have to. They can't really walk up and you know get down to the nitty gritty. But you know the distance is enough mm-hmm. that if you can see mm-hmm. where it should be and the the, the 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 dimensions are what they should be, that's what they're they're looking at. So if I had a picture of this old, you know jalopy sitting in a field grown up with corn knowing that it wouldn't fly i could probably win because i could build that right and then i i would have mike fly it because he would just like toss you know that'd be it interesting again. to see <laughs> how much how realistic how can you get work. like a diorama here's That's a picture exactly of an airplane in, in the cornfield and here's my diorama yeah, yeah I, th- I think the essence of it is they That's want it. a yeah. a flyable scale aircraft a flyable so, yeah. Well, good, that makes more sense. Good, good try. Good try. <laughs> well, uh, well, I don't yeah. want to be indelicate. I know we got to kind of wrap it up, Mike, but, uh, yeah. but Shannon, I wanted to ask you, so you, uh, were the president for <laughs> the club that you're, and so are, right. So I'm no longer the president. Now, yeah. I'm no longer the president for a year uh, more. I'm, I'm a board member. I'm just on okay. the board. So I still attend like the board meeting things. Uh, huh. And I'm still uh-huh. the contest director for as long as I want to be for AEF. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus on going forward into the cool. 20th anniversary. So, so yeah, I'm still, you know, oh, have a great. little bit to do with the club, at least through the rest of this year, uh, as far as running the club. Uh, we'll see. I might, I might do something else other than president or secretary or, you know, I might mm. be VP again. Who knows? But uh, sure. I'll just be on the board probably for yeah. the future. Mm-hmm. But you've officially yes, passed so Gary the torch. Porter is our current president, and uh, I've had a couple of club meetings. I actually, had one this weekend. So, yep. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we're looking excited. When uh, is it the, is uh, March thirty first qualifier? And first. So that's one of the first events with the the two day format, and it people were kind of wondering. Well, usually Gunsmoke Scale Masters qualifiers are three days, but they're going to literally squeeze everything in. They're going to do the static and the flying at the same time they're going to have simultaneous lines so used to be guys would come in on friday 
Very cool. So that's another that's another reason why I can't fly because I would take too long to get it all yeah. set up. Yeah, you got the time. Yeah, it it's kind of like <laughs> take too long. an inspection. You know, you mm, that's funny. Time. Go. <laughs> Three minutes. Mm, go. Oh no. man. Yeah. Well, if you are in Arizona and you would like to go to the Gunsmoke 2023 Scale Masters Qualifier, March 31st through April 1st, it is at the... Uh, Superstition RC Airport. I was going to say yeah. Sun Valley Flyers, but it's not. It's a Superstition RC. <laughs> um, I got my mine on the brain. Uh, Superstition RV, uh, RV. Superstition RV. RC <laughs> Park. And uh, you can... RV2. Yeah, we take R- it out. RC and RV, RC RV Park. and RV Park. So yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if you uh, have any questions, you can give uh, Tim Dickey a call. It's four eight zero five four zero seven five five three, or email him at uh, tdickey two at icloud dot com. Yeah. And he and can get he you is in so touch into with, this uh, that you know attending. I'm really glad he he kind of latched on uh, Very nice. to, to to take over this because the the Scale Masters itself um, has had its ups and downs over the years. Um, I think we're definitely back on the up, and Tim's been a big part mm-hmm. of that. Uh, along with Curtis and, and Brian O'Meara, they keep very cool the torch going. So, kudos to them. Yeah, well, Brian, I've I've seen Brian oh, yeah, O'Meara's Brian's collection. I've legend, been in his shop, legendary. and I, pff, it is phenomenal. Yeah, so just actually showing up to see his planes is amazing. I've seen a ton of them, and he has to be a car too. Unbelievable. So, I know he will. Yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he owns a few dealerships. Well, uh, we are glad you joined us this week. Uh, if you um, are looking for uh, us, you can find us at uh, the Park Fire Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. That helps us. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, probably wrap it up here for this week. I'd love to have Shannon on I uh, love more being often, here, guys. So okay with you. I'm like the fifth and, beetle, uh, I guess. Perfect. Fourth beetle All in right. this case. But. There you go. <laughs> the fourth fourth, B- I'm the fourth BG. Really well, so let's see. <laughs> There you go. There you go. All right. Well, I'm Michael from Arizona. And I'm Jay from the hills of Texas. And I'm, I'm AK Shannon Mike G. in Texas. There you go. Shannon G. Welcome. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review. And feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs>